So this is a box tree caterpillar update and a few words of caution about the raking method. Our last video about removing box moth caterpillars by hand was in 2020. I felt like we really kept on top of the problem last year. 2021 has been a different story for several reasons. Firstly, there has been a far greater caterpillar infestation this time around. Interestingly, we didn't catch a greater number of male moths in the pheromone traps than last year, but there are considerably more caterpillars. Secondly, it rained more frequently this spring and summer than last year. Consequently, we spent less time in the garden and therefore didn't notice the extent of the infestation around the garden until quite a bit of damage had already taken place. Thirdly, I spent the summer completing my master's dissertation at weekends and dedicated far less time to actively hunting caterpillars than last year. So, those are the three main reasons why we haven't kept on top of the problem. And look, it shows. The worst casualty was this box ball. It was almost entirely hidden by the glossy jungle of Fatsia japonica leaves and was a case of out of sight, out of mind. I never once inspected it for caterpillars until this September. Look at the results. Oof, which causes me great guilt. But we're getting back on the caterpillar case now and this video is a bit of an update, including some words of caution about my experiences with the raking method. First, some good news about natural predators. So back in 2019, I read that jackdaws were obligingly helping to control these pests by eating box tree caterpillars in the gardens at Ham House in Richmond. In our garden, which is sadly jackdaw deficient, we have never seen any kind of bird eating box tree caterpillars. However, we have seen a male house sparrow take down a box moth in flight as it crossed our garden. Box moths are generally strong and fast in flight and this moth was really zigzagging to try and avoid the bird, but the sparrow couldn't be shaken off, it really went for it. Pecked at the moth mid-air, moth fell to the ground and was pulled apart on the patio by the sparrow. Brutal, I know, but I feel like sparrows are on our side and are to be encouraged into the garden as much as possible for more moth management missions. Frogs and toads do eat caterpillars in general, but our toad is more interested in the ant colonies under the brick paving and the lazy frogs are not doing a good job. Look at this mess. Come on guys. We do see frogs in these box balls from time to time as if they might be hunting caterpillars. But when I dropped a caterpillar into a truck for this frog, he jumped on top of the caterpillar and then jumped straight out of the truck. No frog was harmed in this brief spontaneous experiment but it doesn't really determine whether our amphibian friends are really helping to keep the box tree caterpillar population down or not. There is one area in the garden where we have never found box tree caterpillars, and that is the lavender circle, where two semicircular beds of heavenly fragrance are punctuated by box balls at either end. Are the moths absent because they've sensed that a slow worm likes to hang around these particular bushes? So is the scent of the lavender deterring box moths from laying eggs? Probably not. If you were to run your hands through the lavender here during the summer, a box moth would probably come fluttering out. Could ants be the answer? There were mass departure flights from the lavender circle on flying ant day this year. Ants do feed on caterpillars and their eggs, so maybe we have ants to thank for this area being a box moth caterpillar free zone. So, some thoughts on the raking method and words of caution. I started using this method earlier this year by necessity really. We have two holly trees in pots at the end of the garden surrounded by box donuts. Holly and boxwood, two of my absolute favourite plants. Ironically, I love them not just because of the way they look gorgeous and evergreen all year round, but because they are hosts to lots of vital insect life. 
including all kinds of moths. And yes, I have seen box tree moths flying out of this holly when disturbed. They're the only moth species not welcome in my holly houses. So anyway, I was tipping some decorative gravel around the hollies when I noticed just a little caterpillar damage on the back of the box donuts. I could not reach those areas by hand, so I popped down a couple of sheets of paper, used a mini rake to scrape off caterpillars um, and dispose of them. And the rake seemed to make life easier on the back. So then I went on to use it at the sides of the box donuts where access was difficult because of other plants. And then I started supplementing the hand picking method all over the garden with the raking method. Uh, and then I realized that on one side of the donuts, the problem was not so much box tree caterpillars as box blight. Yikes. I had been pulling that rake through an area infected with box blight and then dragging the same rake through other box plants in the garden, probably spreading the box blight fungal spores all around. I might not see the effects immediately, but those spores will hang around for years. And after a particularly wet period or next year, when we prune the box plants and make them, we'll make them vulnerable to infection. Uh, so I may well bitterly regret my actions. Now, I do seem to have got that blight under control because there is promising new growth on this area. I will post a separate video on controlling box blight because I've had this problem about eight years ago on a different plant in the pond area and I did manage to get it under control and it's never uh, recurred there on that particular plant or on any plant in the garden until this donut recently succumbed. But uh, I should have checked all my plants carefully for blights before merrily dragging the communal rake through them all and spreading this potentially devastating problem around the garden. This could be a harsh lesson to learn, so please don't make the same mistake I did and check all plants are healthy if you are using the raking method. That said, the raking method is useful to supplement picking off caterpillars by hand particularly the small um, and hard to detect recently hatched caterpillars. You can see in uh, these shots how small newly emerged caterpillars that are so much harder to spot than the larger mature ones can be raked out of the plant relatively easily. Size comparison shows how much easier it is to spot the more mature caterpillars than the tiny new hatchlings. The larger caterpillar at over three centimeters long will be about two weeks old, readying to create its cocoon very soon and to pupate and ultimately become the next generation of box tree moth. The baby caterpillar is probably just a few days old. The older caterpillar was really persistent, methodically, assessing each indented area in turn for a means of escape. It looked like a caterpillar with a plan. So, raking has definite benefits, but another word of caution. I can't help wondering, did my over-enthusiastic repeated raking of the box donut cause damage to the plant that allowed the light spores to enter and take hold? Or, did the caterpillars weaken the plants and then allow the blight to set in? One thing I do think is that the small rake we use doesn't have the finest teeth possible and uh, a rake with finer teeth might be better suited to this method. But the flaw with the raking method is that it does not remove those sneaky little caterpillars ensconced in living leaves like this one. This little fella has welded two living leaves together with webbing and is not going anywhere. I broke away his sneaky den for closer examination and then I could see how he'd hidden himself away 
with underlayers of leaves that he chewed off and it's basically a bit like a duvet day with snacks in house. The rake is not going to dislodge him. He's comfy, cosseted, and he's going to feast in your box card. But we'll get him later. As well as the tiny newly hatched caterpillars, the raking method will also pull out the box tree caterpillar chrysalis. You can see what it looks like. So the biggest lesson this year has been that sporadic and rather casual caterpillar duties do not cut it. The approach has to be regular and dedicated. But it just doesn't matter how old, established or how young and recently planted your box tree plants are. If you were watching this video, it will be because your plants are under attack and we feel your pain. It is heartbreaking and um, because it's really time consuming to control the problem organically by hand, it feels all the more emotionally impactful when you see your plants succumbing. But next year we have vowed we will absolutely keep on top of this problem and check all our plants from March onwards by hand or by rake. Incidentally, when I was talking about the teeth of the rake, I remembered that the correct word for the tooth of a rake is a tine. So I probably should have called this video time to try something new, time to try a new method, time to get the garden under control. Anyway, I hope the raking method applied with caution can help you keep your box caterpillar pests under control, minimize their damage, encourage the sparrows to visit, take care, enjoy your garden.